everybody welcome. Um, it's uh, such an honor to be home and uh, speaking in front of a crowd of amazing Nigerians, but even more so people from where I hail from, from Iberia land. Um, you know, listening to everything I heard today, I was a bit struck by the idea that we're talking about self and self-development. And over my years, coming from a family of uh, boys, should I say, that turned to men, uh, there was always this impression that we had, as Nigerians, the opportunity to do so much more than just living. And in developing my skill set, um, I went through various journeys from motor racing to uh, oil and gas sector, and now I'm in, uh, I guess, the tech sector. And the tech sector happens to be an area where something like TEDx or Kine can can actually happen. But it's happening because of young people. It's not happening because of our leaders. And when I prepared for this conversation, I wanted to talk more about what I do, but I then realized that there's an audience here and I, I wanted to give something that's heartfelt, but I think will benefit as many people as are in this audience and those that are online watching as well. You know, the COVID situation has brought something very interesting to Africa. There is a sense in my own heart that there is a pause button, there's a reset button happening around the world. The de developing world is closing itself up. They're trying to find vaccines. They're trying to look after themselves with, unfortunately, millions of people affected and hundreds of thousands of people dying. Africa, however, is sitting at this very interesting crossroads. While those around us are hunkering down and trying to find a cure, we're still living. We're, we're we're still the energy of life for the planet. Our cases, though we've lost many loved ones, uh, is not as bad and certainly a lot better than most of the developed countries. In this pause, I'd like us as Nigerians, as Africans, as the next big thing that's gonna happen around the world, I'd like us to, to take an opportunity to, to think a little bit about what we want to happen in the upcoming decade. Africa has this reset button right now. We can step a little bit further than maybe the world wants us to, 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 to rise to. And in that, technology will allow us to do that. One detriment that we have as Africans, as Nigerians, is the power situation. And the power situation is that we are we're living on legacy power. In fact, in Kogi State, we're one of the blessed. We've got uh, Geragu 1 and 2. We have power from Ajakuta that could be brought on the grid. But as Africans, we're blessed in the, in, in the land of sun. Uh, the, the first connotation of anything African is that you're going to get burnt. It's, it's hot out there. And um, we need to harness this power. I created Big Energy when I was at the United Nations as an undersecretary for uh, an organization that focused on renewables. And I realized that the Northern Hemisphere wanted to save power and save the planet. The Southern Hemisphere needed power to develop. We must do something slightly different. We must not focus on what everybody wants us to have. We need to focus on what we have and take that and channel that towards what could be a better Nigeria and a better Africa. And that comes from taking our raw materials, not what's in the ground, but what's above our heads. The sun empowers Africans. Nigeria take, needs to take, the, take that power and create a value. Sun power is cheap. It's God-given. It's an energy that's there just as well as in the ground, and we're taking that oil and utilizing it for um, you know, oil and, gas and petroleum resources. What's important for us is that we need to understand that the sun can give us that same power. The richest man in the world is building electric vehicles. Elon Musk, who happens also to be South African, has moved to the US and he's building electric cars. Well, his company is now more valuable than Volkswagen, Rolls Royce, any brand you want to imagine, he's a bigger brand than we are today on the stock exchange. But what is going to power that? Renewable energy has the resource to power those electric vehicles. 
We need to think differently. And those electric vehicles are going to go offline in, in Europe very soon and in America also very soon. And what's going to happen is these vehicles that they're driving right now are going to come to Africa and we're going to be using them as uh, Tokumbo. <laughs> we need to get ahead of the curve. We as Africans are blessed with the sun. And the challenge I'm giving to my brothers and sisters out here is, let's not wait for them to give us what they have discarded. Let's get on top of it. Let's create, let's develop energy. And, and I'm saying this to our leaders as well. You need to give us our young people, our young secondary school students that are here, beautiful young ladies, that, this lady that just came and spoke and, and spoke from her heart. You need to give us an opportunity. And that opportunity is to give us the enabling environments to be great. Africa, cradle of mankind. Our turn is about to come on that circle of life. But we need leadership to take us there. We need visionaries. You know, we love to go to places like Dubai and United States and see all this wonderful things, but somebody gave the vision for Dubai to happen out of the sun, out of the desert, and we're going there ooing and ahhing at Burj Khalifa. 1960, we got independence. What have we built? What have people come here to see? That must change, but it changes with our people, with the hearts and minds of everybody here and everybody watching. What do we want to be the legacy of every Nigerian that's coming after us? I caution young leadership into not thinking that young means 30. A 70-year-old plus gentleman is running our country. And for that, myself in my 50s, I'm a small boy. I'm a young man. <laughs> we bow to our leaders and our elders from African culture. But the truth is, we want leadership that we can talk to. Leaders that can hear us and see us. Our dreams must not be overtaken by our culture. Let our culture, whether you're from the north, south, east or west of this country, let that culture determine who we are. Let us not divide ourselves because of politics. But let's look at what's happening around the world. Let's add, as citizens of this world, to what's going to be the greatness of Africa. Nigeria leads, the rest of Africa follows. If we sneeze, the rest of Africa gets a cold. Let us take that mantle of leadership. Use our minds, our vision, our education, our greatness, our youth, which is our greatest asset. And let's propel that into a different world, a different world that in a minute that I have, I can tell you a little bit about what I think is going to happen or I pray is going to happen. In the upcoming elections, we should look for leadership that has vision. Let us hear what they want, what they dream, what Burj Khalifa they're going to build, what greatness people come to Nigeria to see. Those are the people we want to lead us. You know, we talk about faith. Shuraim talked about believing in our maker. But our maker also wants us to believe in ourselves so that he can help us, every one of us, whether we're this eight-year-old or a 57-year-old or a 77-year-old. But without vision, we're stuck. So I pray that when you leave this amazing occasion in the center of Nigeria, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a place the British came knowing that everything must come through here to get out. Let us renew that spirit of greatness for Africa, for Nigeria, that everybody has come here, people around the world are listening to this event, and let's reset Nigeria. Let's reset the pace in which we want to be. Let's not let, uh, let, let us not let others dictate to us. Let's dream bigger, let's dream wiser, let's, let's not be captivated by what we see, but let us be inspired of what we see outside and let's bring that home. I don't have much um, that I can do to inspire anybody but to talk about myself. But even then, it's a choice that I make because I've been lucky to come from a family where my father did great things. He was never a politician. He built what he built on his own. He knew he came from greatness. 
And I hope that by talking, I've inspired you all to try to look inside yourselves. May God bless you all. And, and um, thank you very much, TEDx, for this incredible occasion.